yet another victim of the pandemic and skipping a theater wide release, Pixar's Soul was released directly to Disney Plus on Christmas Day. The animated film follows the journey of Joe Gardner, voiced by Jamie Foxx, who finds his body separated from his soul just before he makes his big break as a jazz musician. I'm Ronald Young Jr., and I'm on the couch. What do you think you'll do? How are you going to spend your life? I'm not sure. But I do know. I'm going to live every minute of it. This is Ronald, and I am on the couch after watching Soul, Soul by Pixar, available on Disney Plus. Soul, directed by Pete Doctor, written by Pete Doctor, Mike Jones, and Kemp Powers, starring Jamie Foxx, Tina Fey, Quest Love, Felicia Rashad, Angela Bassett, Graham Norton, David Diggs, Rachel House, Richard Iode, Alice Braga, Fortune Feimster, Donnell Rawlings, and June Squibb, amongst other voices that are also in there as well. Uh, okay, so Soul, a new Pixar movie came out today. I don't know if it's also available in theaters. I know it's a 100% available on Disney+. Plus. Another movie that was supposed to have a theater release earlier this year. It might have been in the spring or summer, but again, a victim of the pandemic. Um yeah. So Soul is about a man named Jerry Garner, played by Jamie Foxx, who is a middle school, I believe, band teacher who finally is about to book the gig of his life when he falls into a manhole cover. And as a result, his soul drops into limbo. And as it drops into limbo, he then becomes a mentor to Soul 22 and hijinks ensue. This movie is... No, again, it's a Pixar movie. So, you know, Pixar is no stranger to tackling, you know, large, res- emotionally resonant themes. This movie is no different. It falls right into that vein. As a matter of fact, it picks up, I think, in places where, you know, Coco left off, where Inside Out left off. It's not necessarily, you know, something like, um, you know, The Incredibles or Toy Story, uh, even though it tackles, you know, some of those familiar themes of existential dread. Why am I here? Those types of things. But this one really faces it head on, the idea of finding your purpose. So here is Jerry Gardner. He has... He's he's had the idea of he, he's finally gotten a shot and then he essentially dies. And for him, it is chasing to say, like, listen, I finally found my purpose. I finally have this opportunity to do this thing I've always wanted to do. And now I'm dead. So what do I do now? And this movie tackles that theme over and over again, because within this limbo that he drops into, which is called the great before. There are mentor souls uh, like himself that are chosen to help find uh, new souls, help new souls uh, be ready to go be born into Earth. And the way they do that is by exposing them to a number of things. And this exposure is supposed to create what's called the spark and the spark gives them the ability to go to Earth. Um, and let me just say now, I I have to be able to speak freely about this movie in order to really talk about how I felt about it. So if you have not seen the movie, go ahead and stop right now, because everything I say after this, I'm just going to talk about it. I'm not going to this is not going to be a um, a spoiler free review. So I'll give you a couple seconds to stop five, four three, one. Okay. Everything I say after this, I'm just going to speak freely about the movie. If you've seen it, um, you'll be be able to fully engage, uh, my thoughts on this from here on out. Um, yeah. So this movie, it just, it, there, there's several things it does right off the bat. Like as soon as you walk in, it, it just begin. First of all, it says, is there a problem with us 
trying to say live on earth for a purpose, uh, whatever that purpose may be. For some people, that purpose is music. For some people, that purpose is mentorship or teaching. But is that the reason why we are living here on earth now? As a person, a man of faith and a man, uh, a preacher and um, a person who, who belie- has believed in purpose for a long time, I do think that they ask a very valid question here. And the way they go about answering it is very, they don't come down on one side of the uh, or the other as much as saying like, you know, maybe, but you got to do you. <laughs> Which I think is the answer that we finally get to. Um, the movie is very, very funny. Tina Fey was perfect in her role as Soul 22. She is a difficult soul who has been in the great before for a very long time, has had multiple world renowned mentorships with Albert Einstein, Abraham Lincoln, uh, uh, Socrates, all these different types of uh, mentors, Mother Teresa. And one of the gags that they do in this is point out that she's so difficult because she's not really interested in being born into life on Earth. But all the other souls are trying to, like, help her find her spark so she can get to Earth. And she's just being difficult. And one of the gags they use is cutaway gags to just all of these world renowned luminaries from Earth being very frustrated with this one amorphous soul not being able to find out what her spark is so that she can just go to uh, Earth. It reminded me a lot of Amy Poehler's role in. In baby in baby mama, which also starred Tina Fey, where Tina Fey had to play mentorship for this person who kind of was like a, a an adult adult child. So, but the recurring bits were very very funny, very well executed, and gave the movie a bit of levity. Where if they if it wasn't there, I think this movie would have been way more heavy, which wouldn't have, way more emotionally heavy, which wouldn't have been necessarily bad, but it definitely wouldn't have been a Pixar movie. If it's not a Pixar movie, if they, if they can't like give you some humor along to go with the lessons that you're about to learn. Um, lots of, uh, lots of funny jokes. Uh, they, they start to talk about this place called the zone, which is when you are, when an artist or a person is, you know, in their purpose and they're doing their thing, they're in the zone when you're playing a really good, playing a really good basketball game or playing good piano or really uh, even they had hedge fund managers in there just really like, you know, clicking all the buttons, doing whatever it is you're supposed to be doing. Like if you're a teacher, just really getting there, they're responding and you're teaching and electricity is happening. You go to a place that's called the zone, which is also in this limbo place called the great beyond. And one of the things that they echoed there was that uh, like going into the zone is a good place because it feels good to be there. It feels good to, you know, kind of leave your body and have this out of body experience. But they said that uh, going into the zone is also dangerous because when joy becomes an obsession, the soul becomes disconnected from life. And it showed all these people who had went to the zone and were like, you know, doing their thing, like fulfilling their passion. And then all of a sudden they came these like kind of big uh, dark monsters that were kind of just became obsessed with, uh, with that joy or with finding that purpose. And that resonated with me very hard because it seems like a lot of times, you know, even here on earth, we, I mean, here on earth, in, in like, it seems like a lot of times we get obsessed with, um, finding that joy with chasing that joy in a way that is not healthy in a way that you don't just get to enjoy living life and, and doing whatever it is that you want to do on earth to, you know, to get the little joys out of life. And I think that's where this movie is doing its most important and emotionally resonant work is that it's, it's swinging between saying like, yeah, you know, it's great to be good at something. It's great to be passionate about things. And it's great to, you know, to, to tackle those ideas, but also live your life, man. Like enjoy a sandwich, like sit on the couch, like enjoy, go outside and enjoy the breeze real quick. You know, look at the stars, you know, enjoy the wind. Like look at the leaves fall. Look at all those things. Like enjoy life. Don't be so sucked up into whatever your obsession is or whatever you're, you're trying to chase your joy that you like, you just let life pass you by. Um, and I think that that's one of the most important parts because when it gets to the climax of the movie, here is Jamie Foxx, uh, his character, Jerry Gardner. He's finally doing what he wants to do. He's getting to play the gig with this amazing jazz artist. And when he gets done, he plays the gig of his life. Every standing ovation, his mother's there, mother and her friends are there. And he, everyone's like, oh, you did a great job. Oh, my God. And he walks out of the club and he, he just stands there and he's standing there with the lead singer, um, Dorothea Williams, I think her name is. And he looks at her and he says, um, hey, uh. I thought this would feel different. And you could tell he feels like a little emotionally empty. And he goes, I thought this would feel different. And she goes, well, what were you expecting? And he goes, I don't know. I just, I, I've waited my whole life to do this. And I thought this would feel different. And <laughs> she tells him a story. She goes, there's a story about a fish 
in the ocean. And uh, for those of you seen this, you know what I'm talking about to say, but she goes, there's a fish in the ocean, a young fish. And he drives up to, uh, he swims up to another fish and goes, Hey, um, he goes, Hey, uh, where's the ocean? I want to be in the ocean. And he goes, yo, you're in the ocean. And the fish says, man, this is water. I want the ocean. And she tells him that story and just gets in her cab and drives off. And it's this idea that we spend all our lives chasing after this thing. When, when, when we, when we actually go and obtain the thing, there's an emptiness that comes with it because we, we've spent all of our time obsessing over the thing and not really enjoying the journey and enjoying all of life that comes with it, with going after the things that you, uh, that you, you care about. Now I'm getting very deep into the emotional themes about this movie, but those are really what I liked about it. I mean, that's, and I'm going to talk about the other things that I liked, but, um, I just, I really think those themes are so important. And in a Pixar movie, you can't walk away without talking about the themes. You could talk about all the funny things. There's a lot of funny things in the movie. The jazz, the jazz score of the movie is very good. Um, there's a, there's a lot of cat humor in this, which is just top notch, wonderful. Uh, they get everybody to, um, this is the first time I've ever seen a depiction of a black barbershop in a Pixar movie, which is something I never, ever thought I would see. And, even the interactions they had there were very true to life in a barbershop. Of course, minus the, in some cases, toxic masculinity and massage nor, but other than that, there was just very, very good parts where they really get deep into the characters in the barbershop, even the side characters in the barbershop, they get deep into these guys and they allow them to kind of, um, kind of like a guide. They allowed them to guide Jerry Garner, even on his journey. And he has a moment in the barbershop where, and at this point he's in the body of a cat, but even he has a moment in the barbershop where he's like realizing that maybe he's not, um, you know, engaging with his barber as much. He's, he sits in the chair and kind of talks about himself, but doesn't talk to his barber at all. And his barber is telling him, Hey, you know, um, I wanted to be a veterinarian. I didn't want to cut heads, but I realized that I'm doing good work here and I really like doing what I'm doing. And that's kind of a hint to the theme of the movie, which is that, uh, Jerry saying, no, your purpose was to be a barber, right? He's like, no, I wanted to cut hair. And, 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 and that really stuck with me because as a per as a person who really wants to find my, you know, big quotes purpose, um, and a lot of cases like my person and the thing that I'm supposed to find in life, you find yourself just searching after these things and letting all of the other little things pass you by all of the other wonderful things that happen to you. You just let them pass you by and they, they just keep echoing this theme over and over again. But again, um, one of the other things I liked about this movie is a very black movie. Again, you don't expect that for Pixar, but they, and it's a white director, which surprised me, but they really just let the blackness kind of breathe into this movie. The depictions of black women are, I think are excellent. They're not, they are not, um, cartoonish. I think in some cases they could lean into a little bit, uh, stereotypical, but not into typical stereotypical, not into typical stereotypes, if you will. Um, they nail, the idea of what like kind of like what a black auntie is, what a black mom does, you know, um, even uh, the black diva when it comes to uh, the the Dorothea Williams and the jazz part, like they they just do really good jobs of depicting that. And when I say stereotypes, I just mean the things that we actually know about black folks and not the things that are just played up in white led films most times. And I think that was important to see this. Like I'm sitting there watching, I'm like, they consulted with somebody. They asked a question. Like there was a black person in the room because some of these depictions are just spot on. And I really enjoyed that. Um, this movie is very good. It's a very, very good movie. I think the parts that I didn't like, um, there's a part where, uh, Jamie Foxx and, uh, Amy Poehler essentially switch bodies. So she's in his body and he is in a cat's body, which begets, becomes a little freaky Friday ish, but they, they get some humor out there, which I also enjoyed. Um, but I, I didn't, I didn't love those portions of it. I really love the parts where they're talking about the theme or they're in the great beyond. And then towards the end, when they get back to talking about discussing the themes, um, the the freaky friday portions and i think they could have that could have been way worse it could have just been a oh no this is two people fish out of water is any comedy how are we gonna get that and they didn't stay there which is good they're there for about maybe half an hour of the movie maybe half an hour to 40 minutes of the movie and but it's not the most significant portions of the movie and that they switch bodies is not is not terribly important it's really what they're accomplishing when they switch bodies which i think was good but i didn't love that um and and and, I, and honestly, I think in terms of drawbacks, that's probably the, my only real drawback to this movie. Other than that, I would, 
yeah, it's so good. I think it's important for everyone to watch. I think parents will like this. I think kids will like this. I think couples will like this. I think this is a, a, a good, this is a good piece of work from, from Pixar. Again, I've, it's really hard for me to find um, strong criticisms from me on there. I think the one thing I think there's a, um, a part in this where <laughs> Amy Poehler, I'm sorry, not Amy Poehler, where Tina Fey is in Jamie Foxx's body and he's like, all right, come on, let's switch bodies back. It's time for me to get back to where I'm supposed to be. And she uh, runs off and goes, no, you know, I want to find my purpose. And I had a moment where I was like, well, this is a white woman stealing a black man's body to find her purpose. And I was like, uh, that makes me a little uncomfortable, but I had to dig deep for that one. I was in there and I was like, uh, and they didn't stay there very long either. She kind of runs off and they end up, you know, falling back into the great beyond and going about their way. But it was a, a moment there where I was just like, uh, I don't know about that, but you know, it's, I don't think it's enough to uh, derail the entire movie or take me out of the uh, entire, entire movie. Yeah. With all of that being said, I think this is a strong, a strong 4.25 movie. Um, yeah, it's, it's not perfect. I mean, there's some tropiness and I mean, you know, you know, some, there's some things about it. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I would change, but just things about it that just definitely weren't perfect, but it was a strong, strong movie. Uh, very good. I would definitely watch it again. Um, there's a part towards the end where they get into some nev- negative self-talk aspects, which I've dealt with, which really made me tear up a lot because I just was like, Oh wow. I just, I really saw it. And I thought they nailed that well. So it just, yeah, it's it's really hard for me to mark this movie down at all. So, yeah, I would give it 4.25 of five stars. Definitely think you you should see it. It's on Disney Plus right now. Don't know how long it'll be there, but it's on there. No additional charge, no $29.99. Way better than Mulan. Think worth seeing for everyone, yeah. Um, And with that, actually, and one more thing, the acting was fine. It was not, I don't think it was a standout performances from anyone because it was voice acting, but I think they all did the job. I think the, the writing and direction of this movie and the, um, the themes of this movie were stronger than any of the individual performances, if that makes sense. But I think they all were a part of it. So that's why I didn't really get deep into their performances as much as like the film itself and the story, I think were stronger than any of the individual acting performances, but everyone did expose, they, they, they clocked in and did exactly what they needed to do to make the movie a success. So with that, leaving the theater is a production of, Oh, it's big Ron studios theme music by the mysterious Breakmaster cylinder to find out more about this show and other, Oh, it's big Ron studio shows. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at, Oh, it's big Ron. That's at O-H-I-T-S-B-I-G-R-O-N. If you like this show, check out our sister show, Time Well Spent. Leaving the theater will be back soon, but until then, I'll be here on the couch. <laughs>